everyone, it's Maki here. Are you enjoying the movie Gundam Seed Freedom? In Japan, there was a talk show with director Mitsuo Fukuda and the staff on April 18th. It was an event where fans could ask questions directly to the directors after watching the movie. Among the topics discussed, there seems to be some misunderstanding among the fans. I would like to address this point first. This content does not contain any spoilers, so those who have not yet seen the movie can watch it without worry. Mr. Fukuda asked a question to the fans if there were to be a continuation of the story. Whose story would you like to see? He asked and asked for a show of hands. Many fans waste their hands for Shane. Many also waste their hands for Asran and Kagali. Finally, Mr. Fukuda asked this question Is there anyone who feels that they have seen enough of Hero's story? Only a few people waste their hands. This caused some fans to misunderstand Mr. Fukuda's intention and think that he might not like Hero, which shocked them. I believe that Mr. Fukuda did not intend to send such a message. Of course, this is just my personal interpretation. Kira and Laws play the central role in the story of Seed Freedom. Their story can certainly be called a happy ending. Mr. Fukuda probably wants to expand the world of the Seed series. That's why he put such a question to the fans in the presence of Sunrise producer Toshi Kosunaka and other staff members. I can understand why fans want to see more of Hyor and Law's story. I feel the same way. However, in order to expand the scope of the entire work, it's necessary to try new elements. Maybe that's why he saw the reaction that fans are satisfied with Kiro's story. In the Universal Century series, characters such as Amma Wei and Shao Ozanabo have gained immense popularity. However, Yoshiyuki Tumino made the decision to write these two superstars out of the story. This decision saddened many fans and led to a temporary downturn in the Gundam series. However, such challenges eventually led to the birth of many more Gundam series. Mr. Fukuda's remarks may be based on a similar thought process to that of Mr. Tumino. Mr. Tumino had periods of struggle with the immense popularity of the Gundam series. He was torn between his mission to create what the audience wanted and his passion for what he wanted to create himself. Perhaps Mr. Fukudo is also torn between the popularity of Kiro Yamoto as a superstar and his passion for developing the Seed series. Because of your deep love, you may be forced to make the difficult decision to remove a character from the story. Again, this is very much my own interpretation. What do you think? Please leave your opinion in the comments if you like. Now on to the content of the talk show. From here on, I will discuss content that contains spoilers from the movie. If you prefer to watch the movie without spoilers, I recommend watching this show after you have seen the movie. Did you hit the subscribe button? Let's delve deeper into the Gundam series together. First, let's talk about the new anime. Mr. Fukudo mentioned I am currently writing a story that depicts the circumstances that led to Shin's decision to pilot the justice. This statement was met with cheers from many fans. Many fans are looking forward to the freedom hijacking incident. It seems that the writing of this event has begun. According to Mr. Fukuda's previous statements, it was revealed that the story will depict him recovering from post-war sorrow and regaining his cheerful personality. In the movie, 
Daniel of the Black Knight Squad mentioned that I have already demonstrated the weaknesses of the compass. The story will likely explore how Shin, after experiencing the freedom hijacking incident, decides to obtain a weapon to protect those without power. The impression of Shin protecting civilians at the beginning of the movie seems to become stronger. The creation of Compass was also discussed. Compass is an organization founded under the leadership of Cavalry. It is related to the latter part of the Sea Destiny story. In the world of Sea, the international order is crumbling. In Sea Destiny, there was an international treaty called the Junius Treaty. It is an important treaty that prohibits the use of nuclear technology for warfare. However, countries that have not ratified the treaty naturally ignore the Junius Treaty. Moreover, even the Earth Alliance, which is supposed to have signed the treaty, launches a massive amount of nuclear missiles at front at the beginning of the story. Front also uses nuclear-powered mobile suits such as Destiny Gunnam and Legend Gunnam in the war. The biggest flaw of the Junius Treaty, as Mr. Fukudo said, is that there are no sanctions. Since both the Earth Alliance, the largest organization on Earth and Prank, which has the technological capability to wage war against the Earth Alliance ignore the treaty, there are hardly any nations that can impose sanctions on them. Orb declares neutrality, so it does not actively intervene in international conflicts. In Sea Destiny, and Seed Freedom Orb was attacked, as stated by Chairman Duana and Queen Orr, leading to battles in defense. Cavalry considers this international situation extremely serious. She decided to form Compass to end the situation, where treaties are ignored and violence escalates out of control. She thought of measures to reduce military power worldwide. The ultimate goal was to use technology, materials and money to rebuild the world. In the final scene of Seed Freedom, Kagali is shown wearing the ring she received from a friend. Many fans were excited about this scene. In the climax part of the Sea Destiny story, there is a scene where Kagali takes off the ring. Mr. Fukuda also talked about this. Kagali decided to seriously face the fact that Orb's land had been scorched by war and that many lives had been lost. She mourned the loss of life due to the failure of politicians. Therefore, she decided to work for the nation and its people instead of for herself and took off the ring. The ring is carefully stored in her room, not returned to Akron. So this scene does not represent the end of Kakali and Afran's love. Afran understands that Kakali is putting herself second and has decided to work for the nation. With Compass successfully established, Kakali felt a sense of closure and took the ring from the dresser to attach it to a necklace. Kakali considered the successful launch of Compass as a milestone. Athran and Kagali have an emotional bond. However, they have not yet had the opportunity to put their feelings into words. In fact, Kira and Lars have said I love you many times in the movie. However, Athran and Kagali have not yet said those words to each other. Of course, in the story of Seed, Athran and Kagali kissed after having feelings for each other. That is an interesting element. At the end of Seed Freedom, Kira and Lars kissed. During the credits, Lars said, please tell me what's in your heart. Perhaps those words were also directed at Asran and Kagali. Let's focus on the last scene of the movie. In the scene where Kira and Lars kiss, the sun seems to be setting over the sea. Compared to the morning sun, the sunset has a stronger red color. 
This seems to be related to the higher amount of moisture in the air in the evening. I just looked that up. What about the scene where Asran and Catalyst Cavalier is flying? I'm not sure, but in the scene where the Cavaliers are flying side by side, the sky seems to have more blue. Could it be that Asran and Kagali are flying towards the morning sun? This gives the impression that the story of Hero and Lars has come to a happy end and that the story of Asran and Kagali will be told next. Of course, this is just my opinion. Many fans may be curious about one aspect of Asran. How was Asran able to master the strike freedom? In the final battle of the movie, Afran pilots the Strike Freedom and confronts Shur, who pilots the Black Knight's Quartz Shivel. Maybe other pilots could just fry it. In Sea Destiny, there was a scene where Lawless pirated the Infinite Justice Gunnan. However, Afran fights on an equal footing with Shur, who pilots the Shiva and is an extremely skilled pilot and he is familiar with the Super Drop Gun system. To this question, Mr. Fukuda replied, This is simply because Athran is an exceptionally skilled pilot. While Kiro is a special coordinator, Athran is stronger in terms of piloting skills. This is a very simple answer. The final enemy in Seed, Raul Cruze was also not a coordinator, but a natural. Cruze, who was piloting the Providence Gundam for the first time, fought evenly with Kiro and was defeated at the last minute. It might not be strange to think that Asran, with a lot of training and experience, became a stronger pilot than Kiro. In addition, computer graphics issues were discussed in another interview. I would like to talk about these topics as well. First of all, let's look at the initial color scheme of the Rising Freedom Gunnam. It is similar to the original Freedom Gunnam. It was created to check the balance of the computer graphics model. It might be interesting to use this color as a reference for painting models, such as plastic models. There is still a lot of content spoken by the directors that remains. I want to analyze this content and produce the program. Please look forward to it. Thank you for watching to the end. Let's meet again in the next program.